You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. AirPods Pro with adaptive audio. Automatically keeps out the sounds you don't want to hear so you can listen to your music. And lowers your music to let in the sounds you do need to hear. Hi there. Hi, what can I get you? I'll have a strawberry mango coconut probiotic smoothie with wheatgrass. Anything else? Extra wheatgrass. Here you go. AirPods Pro with adaptive audio. Available on AirPods Pro second generation when enabled. Walmart Plus members save on meeting up with friends. Save on having them over for dinner with free delivery with no hidden fees or markups. That's groceries plus napkins plus that vegetable chopper to make things a bit easier. Plus, members save on gas to go meet them in their neck of the woods. Plus, when you're ready for the ultimate sign of friendship, start a show together with your included Paramount Plus subscription. Walmart Plus members save on this plus so much more. Start a 30-day free trial at walmartplus.com. Paramount Plus is central plan only. Separate registration required. See Walmart Plus terms and conditions. Actually, it's the... It's the lead play in our, in our offense. What's up, guys? Welcome into Packers Total Access. My name is Clayton. You can check us out on Packernet.com. You can find me on Twitter at Packers underscore access. I'm joined alongside tonight, Jacob from the Packer, Packernet Fantasy Podcast. We got Tim live in Green Bay, and uh, we're going to cover quite a bit. I know this, the chat is already lit up. We already know what one of the topics is going to be today, as uh, Eric Sutherland kind of broke the news to everyone in the chat. He said, Watson and Dobbs both not practicing because of hamstrings. That's unfortunate to the point I may start drinking heavily now. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm sure you guys have already heard the news. We're going to cover all of that for sure about the uh, about the injury, the the very first injury report that dropped today. I just want to give a shout out to everybody in the chat. Like I said, Eric in here, Zane in here, uh, Roger Davis. Boy, I tell you what, the PTA posse is out in full force tonight. I see all those uh, those special emojis there, man. Good stuff. We got John in the house. We got Roger. We got uh, Mike Sandoval, John Schmidt, Appreciate you guys uh, dropping by for sure. All right, let's do this uh, <laughs> elevated shine already. <laughs> oh, <laughs> don't drop the soap. soap. <laughs> don't drop the soap. Don't drop the soap. All right, hey, 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 hey. That's just the way we talk in the clink. <laughs> All right. You're not going to do it tonight, Sean. What's that, Jacob? No, it's just everybody that works at my work. That's all that we do constantly is nothing but pr- prison mic references and office quotes throughout the whole day so you would be the bell of the ball i was just gonna say you might <laughs> think you would be the bell of the ball that's awesome that's absolutely so. awesome all right let's start off with some other news that's outside of the packers world but it does have a direct impact uh, on the packers and, and we're gonna have the phones open tonight too we may have a few people call in we'll see how that goes but mr nick bosa signed a new contract today we seen this one coming we talked about it last night on the mm-hmm. pod that they were very close to a contract, right? And Ian, <clears throat> Ian Rappaport reports, you can hear I'm getting emotional over this. <clears throat> Ian Rappaport <laughs> reports Nick Bosa gets $122.5 million in overall guarantees, and the team will waive all fines. Imagine that. Imagine that. Um, so, And he obviously quote tweeted that off of his original tweet that said, the 49ers and all pro edge Nick Bosa have agreed to terms on a massive new contract extension with a – with the reigning defensive player of the year becoming the highest paid pass pro- pass rusher in the NFL, Bosa's holdout is over as he gets a five year, one hundred and seventy million dollar deal. Now you guys do the quick math there. What's that come up to, gang? Thirty four million per year, right? Now you guys remember what we talked about on the show last night. I said the rumor was Nick Bosa was looking to match Aaron Donald's contract, right? Look at Aaron Donald. 
What's that cap hit right there, gentlemen? What's that say? That's thirty-four million, Clayton. That's thirty-four point one million dollars. So he got what he was looking for. And again, um, how does this come into play with Rashawn Gary? We kind of talked about it last night. All of the numbers that we figured up to come to twenty-six million for Rashawn Gary, um, it took into effect or took into consideration, Jacob, that his contract, you know, or his uh, what am I trying to say here? His production will be compared to your Bosa's, your TJ Watts, your, you know, your other players across the league. And I know some people like we were talking with, uh, with Mike, the super fan um, on, uh, on Twitter, and he'll probably call in here in a little bit. He was kind of bringing this up and saying, look, look at the sacks though. Rashawn Gary hasn't had near as many sacks as Bosa. And he kind of did it just based off of sacks. And he believes that that Rashawn Gary should get 18 million per year. Right. But in my opinion, I'm not saying I'm right and he's wrong, but in my opinion, there's more to playing edge than just sacks. You know, you're talking about pressure rates. You're talking about the amount of snaps. You play all those different things. Um, I don't know, man. How do you feel about that, Jacob? That number that he came up with, this is off cuff already, but the number that Mike came up with saying that Rashawn Gary, he thinks a fair price would be $18 million per. Do you agree with that? I think that's a little – I don't want to say disrespectful, but I like you talked about, there's different things other than sack categories. We can talk about that which uh, I'll be talking about that in the hot takes coming up, what uh, sack photos and that kind of stuff. But specifically with Gary, I mean, did, did, does he take into account the injury situation? Because that would be, to me, a more legitimate buffer on his salary. You know what I'm saying? Because he's coming mm-hmm. fresh off a very new injury. I'd like to think that he's good to go. He's definitely not going to play the 65% to start the first week one. I think that's pretty much a given. but. Um, I, I I don't know, man. I think that he's worth more than that. The guy can set the edge as a run defender. He's a very, very good, like, you know, a lot of times people think that in a, in a three, four, that that guy's more of just a pass rusher. And then he has no real, like unstopping ability and then he can't set the edge. And it, it, but you look <laughs> at both our edges between Preston and Gary, those guys are not just, you know, they're not just, pin your ears back and rush like pass rusher type guys. They are very much uh, well-rounded football players, especially Preston being a very large man. <clears throat> so I'm, I don't know. To me, I think that I think he's going to get north of that. I think that Green Bay respects him more than that and respects that uh, what he's done for the organization, what he's went through, the sacrifices he's made, what he's sat through, the way he works, his – his, his work ethic, the way that I think that he he seems to me like at least a two contract, if not three contract guy at Green Bay. All around. Yeah, <clears throat> they absolutely love him. There's no doubt about that. Goody is raved over his work ethic and and how he won't be denied on this rehab. Um, obviously, Lafleur loves him. I think he's a team leader. Um, I you know in every sense of the word. Now, if we listen, here's here's the deal, guys. If Rashawn Gary wants to sign for 18 million, I'm not sitting here saying they shouldn't do that. Like heck. Do it, please. You know, if he's all about that, that would be absolutely awesome. But I want you guys to rewind three years ago and what happened with Devontae Adams, okay? With what happened with Devontae Adams, the whole last dance thing, it was – it had nothing to do with Aaron Rodgers, and the media completely misinterpreted that, right? They thought it was all about Aaron Rodgers. The whole last dance social media post was about Tay because they lowballed him. And basically when they lowballed him and he came back to the table – they and this is his words, not mine. Okay, this isn't Jacobs, this isn't Tim's. Devontae Adams's words said they basically came back to him and said, Well, we need to see it one more year. And on a podcast in an interview, Devontae Adams said, Hey, after everything I've done so far, and you need to see it for another year, no, I'm done negotiating. And that's why he put the last post up. And then, of course, Green Bay comes back and they were willing to pay him more than the Raiders paid him. But by that time, it wasn't about that. He took less money to go to the Raiders than what the Packers were offering yep. because they disrespected him, right? And uh, John Schmidt in the chat says, 18 million feels low for Gary. Zane kind of agrees, disrespect on Gary. Eric Sutherland says 20 million tops. If you can get him for 20 million, I think that's a great deal for the Packers. I, as long as you crack the 20 million mark, I think disrespect is kind of thrown out the window in my opinion. When you get two, three, four million underneath – of that that 20 million mark per on average. And, and keep in mind, the the average per can get thrown out the window if you provide more guarantees too. There's there's a lot of ways that you can, you know, there's more than one way to skin a cat, right? So like 
when you look at it from that perspective, I think 20 million is, is, I don't think it's disrespectful, but if you come in at 20 million, I think he's going to come back at 26, maybe you meet at 23. Right. And, and it's all about where the negotiations start to get to the ending point for sure. Um, here we got David in the chat says, uh, can't make another Bakhtiari mistake. And that's a very good point too. We're looking at Bach next year, $40 million cap hit. Right. And, you know, at, at the time he was at the top of his craft, all that. And, uh, and now we're kind of, it looks like we're going to have to eat 20 million. It's kind of worst case scenario next year. Right. Um, so we'll come back to the uh, Christian Watson talk here in a second, fellas. Uh, let's see here. Um, Eric Sutherland, pay him my yearly salary as a salary as a roofer. Seems fair. <laughs> I love it. Uh, Roger Davis says, uh, pay the man. Um, let's see here. All right, cool. Uh, Gary defensive player of the year, boy, that would be awesome. I mean, that would be absolutely awesome. Tim, what's your take on it, man? We kind of skipped over you there. I apologize. I just wanted to get to those comments. Um, how you feel about Nick Bosa's contract and, and how it may, uh, play into effect. Cause to me, it doesn't seem like anything changes, right? This is kind of on par with what we were expecting. Yeah, I mean, and we talked about this last night, and it's like, you know, I had kind of said I, I figured if we were north of 22, that might that might get it done for Rashawn, um, and kind of with what you were saying, you know, maybe we we look at 20, you know, 20 million is not disrespectful, and then maybe he comes back with that that fair market value offer, you know, 26 was the was at the PFF market value on him, so that was a smoke maybe, track, yeah. Yes, yeah, right. or track. So, so maybe that's the, uh, maybe that's the counter, or he says something like twenty-five and a half or twenty-five, and then you're right, we meet around twenty-two, twenty-three million. Um, I don't know if the Bosa thing is really gonna, you know, I mean, it does set kind of a precedence, but I mean, I don't know how much that's gonna affect the, uh, the deal with Rashawn, other than maybe it gets done sooner than later. I don't know, right. um, but. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I think, I think 18s. I think anything under 20 is probably, probably a little low for uh, Rashawn. Yeah, we got to be north yeah. of 20 million per year for him. Not bad for a guy that everybody, you know, complained about when we drafted him. If you look at, you know, <laughs> funny how that works, right? Yeah, funny how that works. And and now we're talking about how much to give this guy in, in an extension. So, you know, uh, Rashawn's oh, yeah. put in the work. The proof is the proof is in the tape. Definitely. What's that, Jake? What it said that he didn't care about football and that he wasn't a pass rusher. So that's pretty dope. <laughs> and now he cares more than just about everybody else on the field. And he's one of the top pass rushers in the NFL. <laughs> yeah. Help me do this math real quick, Jacob or Tim, if you can. 122 and a half million guaranteed, right? Um, of a total $170 million contract. The guaranteed money. Roughly how much of a percentage of that $170 million is that? I want to do something real quick if we can. Just give me a rough guesstimate. Because, I mean, obviously 50% would be on a $240 million deal. Like based off of that, it's going to be higher. Or what would that be like? So? Like 70%? 70% guaranteed? That's what it's... Somewhere around there? Yeah. Yeah. Roughly. I'm trying to think of, okay, with Rashawn Gary, if the number is $26 million per, right, and you do a five-year deal – factoring everything in, we could give a little more guaranteed money percentage-wise of the contract to Rashawn Gary to be able to keep the total contract down, therefore saving some cap, right? And that's, of course, if he is completely healthy. That's another thing we're not taking into consideration. But Will uh, in the chat said, what should we pay him? What's correct? Again, market value, man. If you want, if you want the guy and you don't want to disrespect him, you've got to be willing to pay market value. If you're not willing to pay market value and you come in and lowball somebody, you're risking ticking them off. It's just the way it is, right? Um, so, according to Spotrack, and, and I agree with the numbers. I don't have that information. I've already deleted that that screenshot we had, but according to that information, it factors in like the five comparables, right? The five comps at that position, and they came up with twenty six and a half million. Now, I don't think Gary would be like pounding the table for that money. If there's anyone that would take a little less, I think it's him. But if you come in at 16, 17, 18 million, he's liable to go screw you guys. You know, enjoy putting the franchise tag on me next year. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's probably how I approach it. And how many years also is something we should be talking about. You know, Rashawn may be looking for a legitimate commitment, um, not not a three year, not a, you know, not a two year or a three year. We're thinking five plus, right? 
Is that what they're going to offer? Uh, probably at least four or five years, right? And, and then yeah. from the Packers' perspective, you know, with it being so early in the year and we haven't we, – we don't know. Is Like Jacob said, is he going to play, you know, 75%? Is he going to play 50% of the time? You know, how, how are we peppering him in? We, that's going to, you know, play into the the contract as well, I would think, right, at least for the term. Yeah. Simon in the chat says 71.7% is that exact percentage. I appreciate you doing the math there, Simon. Um, so, yeah, 71% of the contract guaranteed. Let's say we do a, let's say we do a four-year deal, right? I'm going to do the math real quick here. Keep talking for a second, Jacob. We're going to go four times 26, right? That's 104. So you're looking at, you know, 70 million. What if you said, hey, you know what, Gary? How about we meet in the middle? How about we make it? A, uh, instead of a $104 million deal, how about we make it a $90 million deal and we give you $80 million guaranteed, right? Something along those lines. Um, there's, you know, there's ways to kind of finagle it when it comes, uh, you know, in that regard. So, all right, cool. Um, here's another one too. Uh, John Schmidt in the chat says Chubb, talking about Bradley Chubb, five years, $22 million per. That seems close. Completely agree. Now you got to take into consideration the, the inflation aspect, right? That deal was done, uh, I believe, either last year or the year before. So it is going to increase a little bit with time and uh, and all that good stuff. So, all right, cool. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Let's do this. Let's move on to the next thing. And, and a lot of people were hitting on it earlier, and it's kind of some bad news. I don't think it's as bad as some people are letting on. I swear, when I was hearing people on, the, uh, you know, on their podcast today and live radio there in Green Bay talk about it, uh, the injury report, I was thinking, damn, Christian Watson's out for the year? That sucks. Like, <laughs> That's the way they were making it sound, right? And then when I when I heard what they were actually the details of it, it was he was out of practice today with a hamstring injury. So here's the updated injury report. Okay, obviously released here on Wednesday. David Bakhtiari had the veteran rest, did not participate. Romeo Dobbs did not participate because of the hamstring. We kind of seen that one coming. Uh, Rashawn Gary limited participation. Anthony Johnson Jr., full participation. That's good news. I'd like to see him on special teams there Sunday. Christian Watson, hamstring, did not participate. Dontavian Wicks, hamstring, limited participation. So Christian Watson is the big news, right? Nobody's seen this coming. And I, I, Maybe I'm wrong, but Jacob, Tim, you guys didn't see that coming, right? No. Okay, but, so, but, but it's also not that surprising. I mean, let's, let's be honest. I mean, Scoot is a fast, fast yeah. twitch dude you know, uses the legs a lot. I mean, I, I, mm -hmm. I don't know. It, it, so, it doesn't surprise me. That's, that's all I'll say. You know, immediately, <laughs> I love this. Brandy gets it. Brandy is plugged in. I'm telling you, Brandy said the injury report is fluid. LOL. Matt LaFleur kept saying that to the reporters. They kept asking, well, what about this? What about it? it's fluid? It's real, you know, it's, fl <laughs> and of course it drives them crazy as if, they go in there with false expectations that Matt LaFleur is just going to spill the beans on everything. Oh, by the way, here's our 10 openers, too. These are the plays we're going to run around like, hey, like, come on, people. Use your head. I love it, Brandy. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, now, the game plan. How's it going to change the game plan, Jacob? Right? So let's assume the worst, okay? Let's play, kind of play devil's advocate for a second. Let's assume Romeo Dobbs and Christian Watson are both out for the game, okay? If that's the case, who are your top receivers? All right? You've got Jaden Reed. Samori Torre, Malik Heath, and Dontavian Wicks, if Dontavian Wicks is healthy, right? Those are your four. You're probably going to have to elevate one from the practice squad as well. So from a game planning standpoint, depending on how, how serious it is, and only LaFleur really knows that, you might want to lean on 12 personnel, right? Now, you guys know my game plan when we kind of talked about this, and I'm going to go back and watch the tape again from Chicago game last year and, and kind of formulate a, a, uh, a more defined game plan. But I'm saying, hey, look, let's run left, boot right, run left, boot right. Let's run heavy. Let's pound the freaking ball at Chicago. Get those backers pulling up and be able to run a little play action, a little divide. So from that perspective, you go 12 personnel. Who would you rather have on the field, Jacob? This is the question. Would you rather have um, Malik Heath or Dontavian Wicks, right, one of those two receivers? Let's say it's Malik Heath. Would you rather have Malik Heath on the field or Josiah Aguara? Because that's the difference between 11 personnel and 12 personnel if those two receivers miss. I mean, obviously, I'm a Malik Kid fan. I think that that guy deserves to see some starting. Like, I, it's weird. We've talked about this in the offseason, how we should be freaking out. We should be pulling the, the fire alarms. We should be, you know, 
hairs on fire, freaking out. I'm just like weirdly calm. Like you talked about one, I'm weirdly calm, calm with the hamstring injury. I'm, I'm more worried about Dobbs just because it's been longer. But with with uh, Watson, I think I saw a comment somewhere that they saw him on a bike. To me, it's more of a precautionary. We still have guys. It, it's it's Wednesday night. We got Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday morning. That's a long time. I know hamstrings can be mm-hmm. iffy. Don't get me wrong. I'm a little bit. Um, I'm not. I don't feel good about it. I don't feel great about it. But I do have some optimism that both of them could still play. And worst case scenario, if they both can't, I do not. I'm not worried. I think Malik Heath is not afraid of the moment. I think that he's just going to keep building confidence. I think that he is an X receiver, a possession receiver, a guy that can block in the running game as well. And I think that, um, that like you talked about, Torre and guys like Jaden Reed, I don't think Jaden Reed's too young for the moment. I think that, that it's going to be pretty good for him. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and that's really what it comes down to. Malik Heath, I think he's ready, dude. And I know it was just preseason, but that guy, he he looks like he's just ready and, and obviously elevated shine in the chat. Malik Heath eating. Yeah. Um, so if you if you do go, you know, if you stick to the normal game plan, this is why it's important. By the time you get to really tomorrow, when you get into tomorrow's practice, if it's looking like, okay, there's a legitimate shot, both those receivers are missing, then you've got to mold that game plan into 12, Tim. You've got to lean on 12 personnel. But here's the good thing. A lot of people don't realize this. When they talk about the illusion of complexity, right, but simplicity in the play itself, right, you – all of these things that stem from Bill Walsh and his West Coast offense, I've read three books on Bill Walsh now. So this isn't me trying to be smart. This is all stuff I'm stealing from people who have wrote books and Bill Walsh's book that he worked hand in hand with an author on right before he got sick and passed away. It, he said, we're, we're running the same concepts. We're just doing it out of multiple formations. We're attacking the same space. You know, football is all about attacking space and defending space. That's all it is. And, and really – when you come with with these West Coast, you know, passing concepts, you're trying to move defenders out of space while moving other players into that space to create a passing window. Right. So, you know, you can run the same exact passing concepts out of 12 personnel. Oh, by the way, Luke Musgrave might as well be a wide receiver. Right. So that's why I'm kind of leaning on 12 simply because, Tim, what do we got to worry about? It's it's mental mistakes. Right. Like those are the big things you're, you're looking with a young team. It's going to be mental mistakes that hurt this team. So when you talk about possibly putting Malik Heath out there or Josiah DeGuara more often, I'm leaning on DeGuara. How many times did we see DeGuara make mental mistakes last year? Did How many penalties did we see him commit? I don't remember seeing a whole lot of penalties from Josiah DeGuara. I don't remember, you know, Rodgers having to tell him line up in a different spot, you know, uh, a multitude of times. Now, is he limited physically? I think so. I don't think he is a great football player. But when you're talking about mental mistakes, leaning on the run, I, th- I think I would rather see more 12. But how do you see it there, Tim? 12 or 11? Do you trust these young receivers in that backup role if Christian Watson and Romeo Dobbs are, are uh, out for the game? Uh, I think I think we we do. We try to do both. But I would lean, I would lean on 12 and try and run the ball. And I'm with you. DeGuara is, you know – he he is who he is, but uh, mistake free football is kind of his his forte. Um, and as far as the receivers, guys like you know, we talk about the depth in the receiver room, and it's great. But you know, you bring up a great point, Clayton. Like these guys are young and and unproven, and I mean, this is going to be their first. A lot of these guys, their first NFL game, real game. Um, and it's on the road, divisional matchup, rivalry game. This is this is big. So we cannot understate as we hypothetically scratch Dobbs and Watson out of this lineup. That is a gigantic freaking hole yeah. in our offense. And how do we make up for that? Yeah, it'd be great if, if Malik Heath steps up, and I believe he will. Absolutely. I'm with you guys. I believe if Tay Wicks is good to go, he could shock people. I still believe in Samari Toure. And you talk about maybe mistake-free. There's a guy who was here last year. You know, maybe he could slip into that number two role um, or, or possibly the one. I don't, I don't even know. But, I mean, and then we're talking about practice squad, guys. We're talking about bringing up Bo Melton and, you know, like – We can't understate what kind of hole that would leave in our offense. And clearly the response that would be correct would be to, yeah, let's, let's try and run. 
Uh, let's try some play action boot. Let's see if we can get our, our running backs and our tight ends in, involved. Um, and just like, you know, get yards and stay in that positive situations to get out of there with a win, because that's, that's the only stat that matters after the game's over guys. So like, I, I'm a big proprietor of the, uh, I don't give a damn what the spread is or what the score is, get the dub. So whatever it takes, man. Hey, U.S. Cellular customers, I've got good news, so don't hit skip forward just yet. I'm talking about their special customer event, Us Days. What's Us Days? It means exclusive offers just for their customers, just to say thanks, like up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. No, I didn't just misread that. That's up to $1,200 off. They must really like you. Us Days at U.S. Cellular, exclusive offers just for you, just to say thanks. Right now, U.S. Cellular customers get up to $1,200 to upgrade to any new phone. Terms apply. This podcast is brought to you by AT&T Fiber with AllFi. Something tells me that the guy watching sports for 13 hours straight on Sunday, who then stays up watching the recaps of those 13 hours, then calls his friends to talk about it, is definitely going to notice that half a second delay. Get AT&T Fiber with AllFi and watch sports any time of day from anywhere in your house. Live like a gagillionaire. Limited availability in select areas. Go to att.com slash hypergig to check eligibility. Coverage may require extenders at additional charge. Does Monday at the office feel like a storm? Not with Microsoft Copilot. That feeling when Copilot gets everyone up to speed instantly? It's sunny again. When Copilot simplifies complex data so your teams can act, that sun's shining on a beach. And when Copilot uncovers hidden insights, you're on that beach with your people and you find buried treasure. That's Microsoft Copilot. Learn more at Microsoft.com slash AI for all. This episode is brought to you by Auto Trader. Credit scores, down payments, interest rates. Car buying can be a numbers game, but you don't have to be a math expert to get the keys to your dream car. Just use Kelly Blue Book My Wallet on Auto Trader. You can crunch the numbers so you know exactly how much you'll pay each month for your car. So leave the calculator at home. Visit autotrader.com to learn more. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of mixed in the chat, which is really cool. Uh, let's see. Uh, Elevated Sean says, give me Wicks and Heath on the outside with Reed in the slot. I just want to see them play. Got a little bit selfish there, Elevated, but I understand completely. Um you know, the other thing, too, is what Brandy mentioned up here. And then we got a we got a caller on the line. Brandy said, Aaron Jones, wide receiver number one. Think about this. How many times last year, guys, did we see them come out in a pony package, right? Yep. Which is basically, uh, you know, shotgun set. You had Dylan on, in one side car. You had Aaron Jones in the other. Pre-snap motion, Aaron Jones motions out and he becomes a wide receiver, right? So you can still set it up to run your traditional 11 doubles on, right? And, and have 11 personnel, but it's it's technically coming out of 21 personnel simply because you've got Aaron Jones as that receiver. Slide him out to the slot. That's another way that you can kind of get around this. And, again, we're probably overreacting to the injuries, but it's, these are the type of things. What I want this show to be, guys, I don't want it to just be us on here BSing and not talking about things that matter or things that have substance. Like, I wanted everything about this show to be what is the team thinking right now contractually? Game planning, all those things. When it comes to draft time, what are they? What holes are they looking to fill? How are they looking at their scouting department? All those things. That's what I wanted this show to be. So right now, you could bet your I about said a bad word. You could bet your rear end that the coaching staff is talking about this very thing right now, right now, right. If these guys aren't available, what is the plan? But all right, let's go to the phones real quick. We have Mike on the line. Mike, how you doing, buddy? I'm good, guys. How are you guys tonight? No, we're doing well, great, man. It's good to hear from you, buddy. Yeah, good to hear from you. Yeah, I just, uh, I just wanted to chime in quick on this situation with Christian Watson and his hamstring. I mean, I'm just going to give it, give the, you guys, you know, just what a, from a Packer fans' perspective on this. <laughs> with with this news today, and I, I'd like to do kind of share a story. So. This is a story of me in my garage. Okay, I've I've been I've had a, a I got a, about a 15 year old Ferrari that I just turned in for a brand new four year new um, Lamborghini. Okay, and I'm I've been polishing on this thing for months, <laughs> and I've been cleaning it up, and I've got a I've got a date set when I'm going to actually take it out on the street and use it. And the day is coming 
Sunday to take that thing out for a ride. Oh. And four days before Sunday, I walk into my garage and the thing's got two flat tires. Oh, no. <laughs> it's got a hammy. It's got that's, a hammy. That's how that it was a gut punch today when I heard that injury report come <laughs> out. I just got to tell you, I mean, we've been waiting for all off season to see what this offense looks like with Jordan Love at the helm. Yeah. And to have this happen um, is just is is really deflating, I got to tell you. Yeah, <laughs> see what he did there. I see what he did there. I see what there he did go. there. Yeah, it is. It's tough, man. But you know that's football, right, Mike? Like this is that's why we love it too. It's there's a bunch of fantasy owners right now going crap. What do we do now? <laughs> right? It's already getting shuffled. Um, but that's the beautiful thing about the game, and that's why I get into the X's and O's and the personnel. Um, it's just it's such a such a chess match, you know, such a chess match. But um, yeah, and, what do you and what do you want to talk about, but? LaFleur will have a great plan. I, I have no doubt they'll have a great game plan. Um, like uh, Tim was saying, I mean, they're going to have to lean a little bit more on the run game probably this week, which is probably not a bad thing against the Bears. And, you know, again, I, I, I go back to the young receivers. They have a lot of really good quality receivers. And I mean, Malik Heath, we're going to get to see a lot of him, I think. Jaden yeah. Reed's going to have to be ready because he's going to get a lot of balls. Um, and we'll see how they do. Definitely. I, I want to ask you about this, Mike. We had a little conversation on Twitter about Rashawn Gary. I don't know if you heard the open here, but we kind of talked about it on here. Um, you were, you know, kind of tallying up some stats, some sacks and stuff. And in the chat, I mean, it, it, people are all over the place. There's some that would, would agree with you and your take on, on about the roundabout, you know, of the contract that you think Rashawn Gary, um, you know, I, I don't know if deserves is the right word. But, uh, you know, what you're looking at in your eyes as a Packers fan of what you think is fair market value. And there's some that kind of lean towards the Spotrack number and some even more than that, of the 26 million. Just talk about that for a second. How do you how do you see that? First of all, you predicted a lot last year. I, I have a good memory. All right. And Dakota does, too. Dakota mentioned it on Twitter so many times last year. You would tweet at me and Ryan and I'd be damned if it didn't come true. I was like, Mike is on it. What do you think the contract will be? Um, I, I kind of got a feel for, okay, here's how you, you think you would like to see it play out. What do you think the contract will end up being per year? Well, I think, I think you're probably pretty close uh, in that 26, probably 26, 27 uh, number. I mean, that 18 number was just me doing some quick math in regards to sacks, trying to compare him right. against what Bosa actually did. And, you know, keep in mind that Bosa was out for almost an entire year there as well. So, Very good point. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I think, you know, realistically, he's, he's probably in that mid 25s. Unfortunately, I think that's a lot. But unfortunately, that's the market. That's the way it is. And, um, you know, I, yeah. would I like to see Rashawn Gary finish a little more often? Absolutely. But, yeah. you know, his his hurry numbers are through the roof. Uh, it'd be interesting to know what both his hurry numbers are and to kind of compare that way um, to try to get some comparison. Um, right. But I just, you know, Rashawn is is so good in so, other, so many other ways. He brings so many other things to the table. There's nobody that works harder than that guy. That's obvious. Uh, he's a great kid. And I just, I'm just glad he's part of the Packer organization. And I hope he will be for many years to come. Yeah, he's one of those guys. I mean, we talk about all the time. You you want him in your locker room. I mean, he he doesn't miss anything. He doesn't miss a beat. I, what sticks out to me last year, I don't know if you remember this or not, Jacob, but um, in training camp last year, the second team defense was on the field, and they said he ran into the huddle from the sideline and just started screaming. He wasn't even in on the play and was just like – just raising that level, right? He's, he's This is the standard. This is what we represent, whether it's first team, second team, third team, scout team, doesn't matter, right? Um, Rashawn Gary's the backbone, I think, of that defense. He's an unsung hero. And they love him. So, I mean, they're going to give him the money, guys. I don't think there's any doubt about that, yeah. regardless of what us fans think. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. You got anything else for us, Bob? Uh, no. Um, I'm, just, I'm just like everybody else. I'm just – can't wait for Sunday. I mean, this is ridiculous. Uh, it's the longest <laughs> week of my life at this point. Let's hope. Let's hope we uh, get those two tires plugged right and come out Absolutely. ready to roll. Yep, yep. <laughs> I, one thing I would say is maybe they need to get Flea a, a, a tire pump so he can get in there and get those hamstrings <laughs> pumped up. Mike, Mike, <laughs> ask a question. Sure. 
Do you ever, uh, did you get any of those sauces or spices? Uh, try it uh, out yet? I have not yet, but I, I am a big, big wing guy. I love wings. I could eat wings five, six days a week. So oh. some of that rub, I might, right. might have to try that. And I'm, and I'm from so up in that area. So I, I've got connections up in the Hudson, Chippewa Falls, Northern Wisconsin area. Mark's from everywhere, dude. He's from everywhere. <laughs> like the mafia. He's everywhere, but nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> exactly correct. I got I got people in all those towns. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mike, buddy, we appreciate you calling in, buddy. It's always good to hear from you, man. Yeah, thank you, guys. All right, take care. All right, that was uh, that was super fan Mike there, and and I, I think it'd be a good time to kind of mention uh, this episode was brought to you by Old Southern Barbecue, guys. They've got everything. I'm not going to do the read. I'm just going to talk about uh, what Old Southern Barbecue is, basically. Uh, you know, you what you've got is a smokehouse that they become so popular. It sounds like to me, Jacob, that, you know, obviously you got five locations. Let me get this comment off here every time. Um, five locations in Ross Lake, Hudson, Arden Hills, Minneapolis and Shakopee. But their sauces are so popular. Their rubs are so popular. You know, they got a website, OldSouthernBarbecue.com, where you can actually go on there and buy those and have them shipped all over the country, e- even into Canada, from what I understand. Um, so make sure you check them out. They've got like. Four different main sauces. Is that right, Jacob? Yeah, four main sauces, four main spices. They're all ridiculously good. They've actually won a lot of awards. We can get into like some uh, more specifics of the company at a later date, but you guys would recognize where the foundation of the company is from. It's kind of a cool story, but if you like any sort of like barbecue whatsoever, just go to OldSouthernBarbecue.com. If you're within the Wisconsin, Minnesota border area, you can actually go to the locations. If you're in the Hudson area, you can come see me and check us out. Otherwise, you can buy hats. We have a bunch of really funny shirts and that kind of stuff. And uh, if you use PackerNet15 promo code from any point going on in the next basically three months throughout the season, you get 15% off your online order. So try that out. Check it out. It's really, really good stuff. Like, it's actually award-winning in multiple, like, high-stakes barbecue competitions. So it's good stuff. Good stuff. And also, you know, if you're, if you're local there, close to Hudson or any of these locations, and you, you know, you're throwing on a Packers party or whatever, you know, you got a game day party, uh, get with them early and they can do catering for you, which is a really cool aspect as well. Yeah. So again, Old Southern Barbecue, uh, you can find them at OldSouthernBarbecue.com. We definitely appreciate them sponsoring the show for sure. All right, we're getting backed up on the lines here. Let's get to it. We got Andy still stuck in Kansas. Andy, what's going on, buddy? I've been pretty busy. Haven't been able to join you for a while. Been catching up on on the show football season out by us has uh, already opened up on well four different fronts to be honest um <laughs> even the packers haven't started yet but we got oldest son is in the marching band at k-state so he's doing that thing there senior God. has had one game under his belt and our youngest is uh started his tackle football sixth grade league and and um fantasy getting the fantasy team going on there so i didn't mean to go uh four frontal on your on your program this evening good thing the camera's off but uh we're doing pretty good otherwise <laughs> god almighty. tim i would have got out of control quick my man Lord i would have turned the camera off for you <laughs> <laughs> i gotta hit i gotta hit you with one of these right now yeah, he not only rambled but he rumbled and stumbled <laughs> <laughs> all right andy what do you it's- want to talk about bub it's been good. Uh, you know, we, we can, of course, uh, make fun of the Bears because, you know, they're not very good, obviously, as many people know. I mean, we can um, we could talk about the fans and how they're, they must be taking something, right, Some something going on. We could call them the, the gummy bears if we want to really be specific about, you know, how they're probably on drugs, thinking that their team is going to win this thing. I just don't think that they are. Um, the preseason is such an inward look that, I mean, there, there's a bunch of stuff that we didn't see that we're going to see. And that helps with the anticipation, I think, of the upcoming game on Sunday. We hardly saw Aaron Jones. We haven't seen Rashawn Gary. I mean, these, these massive, massive, we didn't really see Christian Watson all that much, to be honest. These massive pieces, um, you know, working Jordan Love through an entire game, um, that's just going to be a fascinating thing, but we can't underestimate the fact that, or we, we shouldn't ignore the fact that the bears do have some strengths. If we don't, you know, play the run very well, or we get, we get sucked into whatever their 
uh, play action game plan is going to be. Justin Fields has thrown long touchdown passes against us in the past. Now, most of those are once the game is beyond, you know, their reach or anything like that, but we still have to respect the, what the opponent can do because they can do some things. So just a lot of questions to be, to be answered. Looking forward to it a lot. Yeah, um, I, definitely. I like what you guys have been talking about, uh, especially yesterday, you know, it's just, just you specifically Clayton talking about how the linebackers that they got, those don't seem like massive power moves for a team, but when you get guys who are more talented than before, you have to at least respect it. Yeah. I think they took a step in the right direction. I, you know, now again, Andy, you, you go on to Twitter and, and my God, you would think that they signed five pro bowlers and they're going to win the NFC this year. Right. I mean, it's just bears fans in general, some Packer fans too. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's all about just taking those those incremental steps in the right direction. And and again, if I hadn't done the studying in the off season last year on Eberflus's defense, I wouldn't have thought as highly on those linebacker signings. But linebacker is absolutely huge in that defense, as opposed to a defense like ours where it's not as important, right? And it's one of the reasons why you get someone like Joe Barry, who was a linebackers coach, who can kind of you know steer the direction away from that that core a little bit. And, and lean on those other positions, people like Jair Alexander and Kenny Clark and Rashawn Gary, obviously, when he's healthy. So um, good stuff, man. Well, good stuff. Well, Chicago's had a heritage of good linebackers, much like we've had a heritage of, of good quarterbacks. You know, if you just think about through that, you know, as much as people say, how can how can we put Green Bay's quarterback uh, you know, game to continue to, to be as good as it has the last 30 years? Well, you've, we've all talked about mathematically how, you know, you can't link one to the other, but you really think that in the past 30 years, Green Bay hasn't learned what good quarterback play is and wouldn't be able to continue it? Like in that, in that type of reasoning, you'd almost expect the next quarterback to be good because obviously we've learned how to do it continuously. Other teams have this, you know, there's, there's a bunch of other teams along the way that, um, they get good at a certain position seems almost generationally. Well, yeah, that, that comes because teams focus on things like that and make good selections in the draft and, and dedicate, you know, different resources to it. Like it's not surprising that we've had good offensive lines and good quarterbacks. Those go hand in hand. So it goes a little deeper than just flip of the coin. Is he going to be good or not? Uh, you know. Right. Yeah. Very well said. Very well said. You got anything else for us, buddy? Two quick Bears uh, stories, if you if you wouldn't mind. Yeah, Both of them are from, from 2009. We lived in Delaware at the time, northern Delaware. So we're in like Eagles territory. And it was really hard to find a game on TV at the time. And I don't know where direct TV was was at as far as it's, it's, you know, as the product. It was beyond my budget. So it didn't matter at the time anyway. I wasn't going to buy it. So we were with... Um, my son, who's now a, a senior, I was at my friend Jim's house. He was from Manitowoc. So we got together, watch the games. And I took Josiah. He was maybe three at the time. And I don't think he'd ever shown him a football game before. So it was the first Packers bears game of that year. And I had asked him, so Josiah, do you think the bears are going to win? And he looked at me with this horrible look on his face and he just goes, no oh no and i thought all right raising this kid up right i said well who 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 do you want to win then he said the people and i I didn't realize it but he thought that the packers were actually going to play football against actual bears so like that's why he was horrified when i when i asked him he thought the bears are going to win like i I had explained that one that was kind of i didn't want to put that message in his mind i thought that was funny (laughs) Uh, and then later on that season, I got fed up with never seeing the games live. The Philadelphia area didn't show anything but the Eagles. Really. I feel that down here. My God. Yeah. So I, I tried to go out and find a place. And I tried a couple of places that advertise themselves as these sports bars. They didn't show anything but the Eagles games. I'm like, I could do that at home. So on my way home, all dejected, I thought, I know of this Irish pub that I heard a few guys go to, they thought it was pretty neat, whatever. It's on my way home. I'll just stop and just try it one last time. I walked into the place. It was kind of loud and you could see the bar and a few TVs and the hostess's little dugout area in the front 
hid most of the other part of this bar restaurant. So I figured this was going to be a dead end, but I might as well ask them here. So I went up to the, to the gal there and I said, you guys, by some chance, you guys, are you guys showing the Packers bears game? And I was, I knew I was really, I probably sounded like Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh, all just, you know, this isn't going to work. And I don't think she heard me. I think all she heard was Packers. And so she looked at me and she goes, oh, you're with the Packers group? Yeah, they're in the back room. Now, this is really? six, this is six and a half years of living in this place with like, as I said, my buddy Jim was a Packers fan, but like thinking I'm in the wilderness. And it was one of those, like you're in a dream when somebody says something amazing that you can't believe. Yeah. So she says, oh, you're with the Packers group. They're in the back room. And I looked at their like, what are you talking about? Because I couldn't see the rest of the rest of it. She's like, let me show you. So we walk behind this dugout area and it has this like party room. You know, a lot of restaurants have, you can you have the accordion doors, you can close it off. And I look across the whole restaurant and sure enough, there's this like banquet room in the back. And there's like two dozen Packers fans in there. And they're the ones who are making all the noise. <laughs> and so I'm like, I'm walking through in this dreamlike state to this back. This place, uh-huh. this place was uh-huh. like two, two miles from my house. they have been, been there the whole time. And I walk in and they start cheering more. Why? Because a new guy showed up with Packers stuff on. They were just happy for another guy to go. And so I walked in there and this whole big group and, uh, that was the last season that we lived in Delaware. So I got to enjoy like half of the season with this, with this group, but it's like grown ups with their kids. And it was, it was totally surreal. I mean, it was That's like, awesome. going, like being back up North. Yeah. And it, dude, it, it helps when you're at a distance and you come across Packer fans like that. It, it helps. It helps a lot for sure. Yep. Just to find like-minded people in, in different areas. That's good stuff, man. That's not that's not even my most remote Packer story, which I don't have time to tell tonight, but I, I hope to tell it. I don't tell it very often. I don't tell it very often, but it's it's a good one. We might find another time to do that. So good yeah, stuff, Packers man. Bears, let's do it. All right. Appreciate you, Andy. Thanks for calling in, man. That's Thanks, Andy guys. Bye. See yep. you, bud. All right, let's go to Miss Carly Ray. Carly, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing all right. How are you guys? No, we're doing great. We're just hanging in there. I I was hoping you would call in tonight and uh, talk a little bit about your all's fantasy league there. And, uh, you know, I'd I'd like to get an update on everything. But uh, first of all, what would you like to talk about here? Well, I would like to talk about missed tackles in our defense. All right. I'm I'm already I'm already not liking this. I'm just going to be honest. with you. Uh, well, I was I wanted to look at some stats and kind of see if what I observed about last year's season was consistent with reality. Because, you know, you just kind of you watch a game and you sometimes you think you know what happened or how we were trending. But I as best as I could find some of the numbers, I just like to read off a couple stats here. Um, in 2021, the defense missed um, 4.5 tackles per game. And in 2022, the defense missed 7.3 tackles per game, which was an increase of about 60%. And the article I read these, I think, took it from Pro Football Focus, um, which I just need to get a subscription to, but I am just can't <laughs> convince my husband of that yet. <laughs> right. Um, so the defense increased their missed tackles by 60% from 2021 to 2022. Special teams, however, in 2022 had a 50% fewer missed tackles than the year before. So special teams did a lot better. Defense did not do better. In 2021, the defense allowed 2.3 explosive run plays per game. So run plays over 15 yards, I guess, is what they consider that um, for rushing plays. And then in 2022, they allowed 4.1 explosive runs per game. Um, That was as of December 2nd last season. And so I was just looking at those numbers and thinking, why? Why are they getting worse? Why are they getting worse with this tackling? And wondered what your guys' thoughts were. I don't know, Tim. Tim, what do you think, man? You've been sitting over there like a good trooper for the last hour and a half and haven't said a word. <laughs> well, I can tell you uh, from my experience at camp this summer, there was certainly an emphasis on tackling. Um, a lot of drills, a lot of technique, a lot of 
stop, start over, do it again. You did it wrong, do it again until you get it right. So I don't think this is something that is not known in that, uh, in that locker room, but um, I, I see exactly what you're talking about because um, that has been kind of the Achilles heel is we've seen this defense get to these spots and getting and get to where they need to be. And then they're just not wrapping up. And I, I don't know if it was just a lack of effort or, or what, uh, or if it's a combination of effort and technique, but that is, that's been something for the past few years that this defense, you know, needs to work on. And hopefully we see an improvement this season. Yeah. And it's mm-hmm. crazy too, Jacob, because like with the CBA, you know, they're so limited on what they can do. Like it's like the first week of camp practice or whatever. They're not even allowed to put pads on. Right. And they have to ease into it. And there's, there's such limitations on being able to practice tackling, but what's your take on it, Jacob? Dude, I, I can't remember the exact stat there, but again, if you reference that Pat Kerwin's take your eye off the ball, that stat was referenced like, I don't know, a couple of years back, at least if that's even um, the revised version. And he said that you get a total of actually, what was it? Something crazy, like 18 live practices. It might have even been 13 actually live full tackle practices. Two Anything, days. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's just unreal to me. It's just uh, unbelievable to think that you can actually gauge. So I don't really blame, especially defensive coaches, for not being able to judge their talent and not being able to put their guys through the ringer. I will say one thing. I don't remember if I talked about it yesterday or the day before. Uh, Kenny Clark was doing an interview, and he said that this was the most challenging, what do you want to call it, mini camp preseason that he's ever went through. And they asked why, and they're like, because we're doing more hitting, we're doing more calisthenics, we're doing more uh, uh Drills, we're doing more conditioning, we're doing more just getting action. tougher, just getting tougher overall. Yeah. Well, and if you think about it, it makes sense because like for years and years and years, we were so for literally 30 years, we were just under the guise of two guys leadership. Under the guise of two guys, it's a different <laughs> word. Google it. It's there are two different words. <laughs> uh, it, it just means that like basically we, we have a whole different leadership, a whole different team. We are the youngest team in the NFL, I believe, like period. So right now we we have the bodies, we have the mentality, we have the work ethic to actually make these guys kind of run around like a college team. I think that might be one of the reasons why I'm a little bit more optimis- or, uh, optimistic about this team is because they still almost have that college. We can beat anyone. We don't care care who like why where we're ranked where people think we're ranked how good they they think we are how much respect they give us because i just think they're a bunch of really high talented quick fast people that don't necessarily maybe don't know the playbook that's the only thing i'm worried about is that malik heath torrey maybe not torrey but um like you talked about clayton i would assume we had we would have to bring down uh, somebody like a DuBose or a yeah. Bo Melton, somebody onto the squad. But other than that, man, I, I feel I, I feel good about it. It's just I'm not, I'm not too worried about it, man. Life is full of things to manage. Your work, your family, your plans, and your treatment. Consider Kesimpta, Ofatumumab 20 milligram injection. You can take it yourself from the comfort of home. If you're ready for something different, ask your healthcare provider about Kesimpta. And check out the details at kesimpta.com. Brought to you by Novartis Pharmaceuticals Corporation. Safety leadership is more than complying with rules and regulations. It's creating solutions that are relational, inspirational, and transformational. With that in mind, the Board of Certified Safety Professionals and the leadership experts at Dale Carnegie brings you My Big Safety Challenge, a podcast featuring insight from proven safety leaders for tackling today's industry challenges and influencing positive outcomes in your organization. Real people, real stories, real impact. Listen at MyBigSafetyChallenge.com or wherever you get your podcasts. Survivor 46 is here, and so is On Fire, the only official Survivor podcast, and we have a twist this season. The winner of Survivor 45, D. Valladares, will be joining us every week. We're going behind the scenes of the biggest moments, the how and the why things happen, and the strategy and analysis you can only get from someone like me, a Survivor winner. Listen to On Fire, the official Survivor podcast, wherever you get your podcasts.
This episode is brought to you by Paramount Plus. Get in, loser! Mean Girls is now streaming on Paramount Plus. Join Katie Heron as she meets the plastics and Tina Fey's new twist on the modern classic. Get ready for more of the rumors, backstabbing, and jokes you loved from the original movie with some fetch surprises. Rated PG 13. Wear pink and head to ParamountPlus.com to try it free. So I got an idea. I got an idea for fixing this. I know, Clayton, you're an entrepreneur guy. And so I think, I know they don't actually tackle in practice, you know, due to fear injuries, but there must be some big Packer fans who are willing to take one for the team and let the Packers tackle him for a hundred dollars a pop. Oh, I think dude. you should organize it. <laughs> God almighty. Hey, did you guys ever see the video of AJ Hawk tackling the fan out at Lake Tahoe during that? that oh my golf God. Did you see it, Tim? I think I remember that. Yeah. Oh. And, and literally a fan in the crowd behind the rope, you know, the golf tournament out there. He's like, Begging AJ, tackle me, tackle me, tackle me. And then finally, he's just like, all right, come on out here. And he can't. AJ absolutely plastered this guy. I mean, he didn't hold anything oh, back. He crushed him. You could see his soul leave his body. So with that <laughs> being said, Carly Ray, I promise you the fans would line up and let that happen. It wouldn't be me. It wouldn't be me. I'm too old for that now. I've got, <laughs> I got way too much on the line at the moment. And uh, I need to be able to walk <laughs> to get <laughs> I, I tell you, man, it's so easy to sit here and watch a game on our couch and 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 yell and scream. I can't believe you know, you guys have heard me talk about the last Bears game, right? How there was like three missed tackles on Justin Fields on that one play, and I'm defending Joe Barry going, Hey, the guys aren't tackling the way they should. I could not imagine having a having a tackle Justin Fields, you know, who's not considered a huge guy, you know. Um, yeah, it's just way, way above my pay grade. There's no doubt about that. Um, what else you got for us, Carly? I want to ask you this. How did you feel about the draft? You you drafted, unfortunately, you drafted Travis Kelsey, right? Am I thinking right? Yeah, I did. That's, I thought that's a tough week one. Crap, yeah. Yeah, and there's nothing you can do about that. That was obviously an awesome pick. And then of course, week one is just kind of the luck of the draw, right? But how do you feel about your draft? Um what, it was it was crazy. So this is my first one, really. I'd done a diff- another one to kind of prep for it, which was not, I guess, IDP and wasn't Superflex. And so when Jacob was going on about, oh, this is Superflex, this is IDP, like, I didn't really know what that meant. I mean, I knew it, but I didn't know why it was weird. So then when we got into it and then we were drifting, I was like, holy crap, all the different ways this can go. So it was it was really fun to do. Um, my brother, actually, he joined the league. He ended up getting to draft fourth, and I was draft and I drafted seventh, he sniped five of my picks straight in front of me through the course of the draft. Yeah, and he's my first head-to-head this Sunday. Like, it's him and me head-to-head, and and now Kelsey's out, and I'm like, crap, I'm already. So I'm just, my goal is to not come last. Yeah, hey, I think you got it. I know this. I've got I've got to know how this ends, Jacob. You got to keep me informed because I want her to smoke some of the guys. Because you've got some high school buddies too, right, Jacob? Uh, yeah, actually it's, so here's the deal. I will admit. So Carly, I thought when she first joined, I was like, Oh, first, first time a a girl's ever joined the league. This will be interesting. Like, and then she messaged me. She's like, what the kind of, what's, what's, what's the deal with all these different things? And I was was like, wait a minute. Like, have you ever uh, been in a fantasy league? She's like, nah, but I really wanted to try one. And I was like, you realize you just joined probably the most stupid, intricate, dumb (laughs) over the top <laughs> fantasy league ever. And she's like, all right, do you have any links I can study? And I was like, okay. And I gave her a couple. And to be completely honest, I'm very impressed. Every time I hear you talk, I'm like, wow, this is somebody that I almost feel like has been at least paying attention to football for a long time. But you you seem like you've done your research. I will bet you that she will beat at least one of me, Tony, Justin, or Bad Luck Paul, or yeah. Yes, my brothers in the league and my uh, one of one of my buddies from high school league as well. So I'm, I'm I'll probably, guarantee I'm you probably that she's only gonna be gonna one ma- I didn't like I'm my draft. Probably, I, had a- I was gonna say I think the only guy that I'm gonna beat is the guy that did the entire draft on auto draft and got like two defenses with what his fifth and seventh picks or something crazy like that. That was bad luck, Paul. It was an it was his uh, anniversary, so we gave him. A- Get the so I better beat him. Otherwise, yeah, that's not going to be great. Hey, like I said, you got to keep us informed because I, I want you to smoke those guys for sure. They're all going to hate me because I'm telling you, if you finish above 
How, how many people are in the league again, Jacob? Fourteen. Fourteen. We got to get you at least in the top half. And I'm telling you, if you win the whole damn thing, I'm going to be insufferable. I'm just telling you right now. So <laughs> that's just the way it's going to work. You got anything else for us before we let you go, Carly? Well, I've been reading that book, um, the Take Your Eye Off the Ball. And Let's go. one of the things, yeah, it's been great. But one of the things they talk about is just in the game, how little time there there really is to make adjustments in halftime when you go back there and you they really have only like three or four um, minutes. And then I was looking back at kind of Joe Barry's resume and stuff and how his teams did really great when he was linebackers coach. But when we he was the defensive coordinator, they just didn't seem to make the changes that they needed to remain competitive in games where things just weren't going their way. And so I'm hoping that now that Joe Barry's up in the box and he's seeing things from a higher viewpoint, that will hopefully help. And I guess, yeah, that's just something I really want to see in this game in Chicago. Like I don't even, I want to them to either have to come back from behind or if they have a great lead in the beginning, not to lose it because the other team makes adjustments and we don't properly anticipate them. That would just, that and less missed tackles would just make me absolutely thrilled. I'll tell you this. The game last year, that last game against Chicago in Chicago, they scored 14 points. That should not have happened. They were blown coverages. Well, they were blown coverages and missed tackles. If you if you took those 14, I understand. If ifs were fists, we'd all be drunk. I got it. But I'm telling you, if, if, ja, if ja does not blow his coverage, right, that's seven points off the board. If one of those three people, one of those three defenders, tackles Justin Fields on the on the zone read right, that's another seven points off the board. They had Chicago's number last year, and and Matt Lafleur, it was like a coaching clinic. You guys remember the Christian Watson end around, all and, and, and you know Aaron was in his bag as well. I I wouldn't be surprised if it's a blow. Now can Chicago win? They could win. They definitely could win. But what you said about Joe Barry being up in the box, Tim, how do you feel about that? If you're the defensive coordinator, wouldn't you rather be in the box? That's where I would rather be. Uh, yeah, I agree. And uh, that's why I was so excited to hear that he was going to take that approach this year. Um, and to Carly's point, yeah, like when you're like a linebackers coach, position coach, you you probably do want to be on that sideline arm in arm with your guys you know, looking at the looking at the tablets and the video feeds on the sidelines, staying in their ears, staying in communication. But if you're the coordinator and, you know, especially running these quarters concepts, man, right, Clayton? I mean, talk about perspective. Like it, you want to see the space that your guys are covering. So I, I wholeheartedly agree with this approach. And I think Carly's right. I think we'll see uh, a difference uh, this year starting on Sunday. Yeah, definitely. Good stuff, Carly. We appreciate you calling in. It's always good to hear from you, and, and I'm glad you're enjoying that book. Um, I'm telling you, it 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 was it was the moment that everything changed for me as a football fan. And again, I got that book when I was broke too. Like we were going through some tough times. I got it back in 2000. I think it was 2010. I believe it was, and we had hit some real hard times. Had a had a, a company that that I worked for at the time went belly up. My wife lost her job. I won't talk about the specifics of the income number that we lost, but it was like, holy cow. And that summer, one of the things I, I decided to keep was Sirius XM or Sirius NFL radio, that you know subscription I had to it. And that was back when they had a little face plate that went in the boom box, right? So that was back in the <laughs> day. And I was like, I'm just going to lean on this and work my tail off. And, and it was really everything that happened in that economy is what provoked me to go, you know what, this is never going to happen again. I'll be damned if I'm going to make excuses. I'm going to go start something for myself, and then I'm going to start something else, and I'm going to start something else. And and ever since then, you know, everything is, has been awesome. But that book, purchase that book at a, at a Books A Million down here in a place called Johnson City, Tennessee. And I wish you could see that book. There's stains all through it, coffee stains and everything. I mean, I took that thing out. I took it on the job site with me when I was pouring concrete and doing steel construction, everything. It's a, it's a great book. It's why I always recommend it to other people, but it's got some sentimental value to me too, because like I said, it was a, it was a tough time. It got me through some tough times for sure. But anyway, awesome. we appreciate you calling in. It's always good to hear from you and don't be a stranger. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Have a good night guys. All right, I'll see you. That was Carly Ray. She's gonna dominate in that fantasy league, Jacob. I'm speaking it into uh, existence. She's gonna, beat me. she's gonna beat us all, probably. She's very well. <laughs>
when I when I first met her, I was like, oh man, this chick is gonna be like. Uh, it was so funny. I talked about it all the time. She she was like messaging. She's so sweet. She's a very she's a sweetheart. And she was like, guys, what do you think about the like the IDP average draft ranking? Blah blah blah. And nobody was responding to her, like just asking all these questions. And I sent her a message, and I was like, Carly, I was like, you know that we're playing for money. Like these guys aren't going to be giving you tips and advice. And she's like, hey, got it. And then she started sending memes and like just like s <laughs> talking, you know, BS talking. And I was like, you got it, you got it. So I love it. It's good stuff. Hey, so I I can't get the video, but I've got the screenshots of AJ. Hawk tackling that guy. So I'm going to share the screen here real quick. This is freaking hilarious. Hopefully you guys can see it okay. Let me go ahead and get this up. Um, so you'll see right here, this image in the center right here was the guy shaking his hand and asking him to do it. So he lined up, and then there is the aftermath. Look at this. <laughs> Why do I Bruh? get like Bob Barker, Happy Gilmore? Yes. <laughs> Just looks like it. The price is wrong, Bob. Price is <laughs> wrong. Something else, but you know, you get the point. <laughs> anyway, love it, dude. That's, that's AJ Hawk's one of my favorite players, dude. I remember this was before Twitter and all that, and we were on message boards. Were you guys, Tim? Were you ever on message boards back in the day, like Packers <laughs> Packers news message boards? No, not not too much. No, but I did I did have a MySpace at one time. I don't know if that counts. <laughs> You over hanging out with Tom, Jacob? Did you yeah. uh, did you ever have? A, were you ever on message boards? No. So I, basically, the Green Bay Press Gazette they had PackersNews.com, probably still do, and they had forums, and it was like Twitter. Like you would go on there, and there would be topics, and and everybody's just you know it's like chat rooms. And I could not tell you how many times I defended AJ Hawk. To this day, people were like, "Oh, he was a bust." Okay, he's a bust. AJ Hawk's a bust. He's the all time tackling you know leader. In Green Bay history. Oh, well, that's just stats. Okay, gotcha. He won a national championship. All right. He won a state championship in Ohio, first of all, in high school. He won a national championship at Ohio State. And then he turned around and wins a Super Bowl with the Green Bay Packers. Oh, by the way, he was the green daughter and, yeah. you know, pretty much a team captain. Dude was phenomenal. I could not tell you how many times he shut down Adrian Peterson. Like, Watching him live in Lambeau and going, thank God number 50's out there. And him playing hurt so much. The dude was just an Iron Man. Absolutely love AJ Hawk. So anyway, um, hot takes. Let's do it. You ready? Let's do rapid fire hot takes. Y'all good with that? I I'm not gonna have time for hot takes. My hot takes could take Jacob. Like, my hot takes could get, take a good 15 minutes by themselves. So I'm wondering if we should like save it for tomorrow. We saved it for tomorrow yesterday, Jacob. I want I one hot take. One hot take from you right now. I want to okay. hear it. Yeah, and You better right. sell me, too. So this is my hot take. I think the Packers as a team are going to eclipse over 50 sacks total as a team. Now, that may sound like a, just an arbitrary number, but, for instance, last year the Packers had 34. The team leader, the pa- the, the team leader last year was Philadelphia had 70. There was only though there was a big gap. They had they had a great year. There was only three teams though that had over fifty that year. I believe it was like New England, San Fran, and and someone else. Um, but I think the Packers could take that leap to have a fifty plus sack team. And, and I don't even care where it comes from. If you look at Rashawn Gary, any of the other edge defenders, some of those interior guys, a lot of the blitzing linebackers. I think that are we have some some cornerbacks that we'll be sending. A lot of guys last year, it just did not. As soon as Rashawn Gary went down, I think the stat is something like when the, in the games that he played, our pressure rate percentage was at like third. And the, 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 after he went off, we catapulted down to like 28% or 28th overall or something like that. So um, I, I just really do think that that's going to be a big, a big improvement from year to year. I guess we could go, we could do a few more. You want to do a couple more? You keep going, then me and Tim will finish it off. That way, if you have to hop off, you can hop off. All right. What's your so next one? My other one, is, and these are bold. These are like, they're not impossible, but they're very, very unlikely. But right. I, I do almost see. So Musgrave becomes one of the very few tight ends over the last like 25 years to eclipse 750 pass yards in the rookie season. That's up to the likes of guys like Jeremy Shockey, Evan Ingram, uh, Kyle Pitts. If you want to go even back further than that, it's guys like Mike Ditka. Like Dicka, but Dicka. If you look at every single, every single glimpse into the start of the season shows that they are going to use this guy. He has been number one running with the ones basically since the beginning of training camp, OTAs, 
preseason game one, week two, week three. They've got Deguara now. I think they released the official. That's probably what we should have done, Clayton. They released the official depth chart yesterday or today. So we haven't even went over that yet. So, I mean, we could we could definitely do that. We, there's a lot of stuff to cover, guys, before actual kickoff. So stay tuned. We have a few more days to cover some stuff. We only get an hour a day. There's a lot. You know, it's like yeah. drinking. It's getting hard to stay under an hour too, man, because it I, is. I get on there and it feels like 15 minutes. So I, I do think that Luke Musgrave again will eclipse 750 yards. It sounds crazy, but look at what's just look at what's happening week one. We don't have Dobbs. We don't have Watson. Who's arguably the most consistent guy now in the offense is Musgrave and Reed. You know, guys that probably have that that rapport. He's not doing a lot of very deep stuff. He's just that old reliable doing crossers, shallow outs. You know that um, just kind of just being that steady dump off guy, like that little quick intermediate route stuff. I, I love that. I think that's great for what uh, he wants to do. I think that this year, another hot take, two wide receivers are going to eclipse 1,000 yards receiving. Yeah. I don't know exactly who they will be, but I think it could be a Musgrave and a Watson or a Watson and a Dobbs or a Watson and a Reed. I know that that one's probably my most outlandish one because I just think he's going to spread the ball out a lot. But the last time that happened was 2014 when Mr. Randall Cobb had 1287 and Mr. Jordy Nelson had 1519. He had 13 <laughs> touchdowns and Cobb had 12 touchdowns. Do you want to do one more? Let's do it. All right. The defense. Green Bay Packers defense this year as a total gets 20 interceptions at least now last year you think that's a crazy stat last year the packers were like top five they actually had 17 interceptions the top teams there was only two other ones that had 20 that year it was uh pittsburgh and i believe it was uh either new england or san francisco i think it was san francisco and pittsburgh and then i think new england had 19 so I would like, I think that between the, the talent we have at the, the D-backs, and I'm not saying necessarily we're improving on the safety, but I think that we can get 20. 20 would be a solid number. If we do all of those things, imagine, oh, man. Ooh. What are you? What if we do half of those? One of those, it'd be amazing. So, yeah. All right, let's get some hot takes in the chat here. We got Bot Me says, hot take. <laughs> Love is already a top 10 quarterback. Boom. Love it. Uh, let's see here. Also, hot take, Gary, defensive MVP. We got Carly Ray in the chat says, my hot take, J-Love ends with more rushing yards than Fields. That's actually I, – I have him as my sleeper quarterback right now. Musgrave and Love and Jaden Reed are sleeper, sleeper, sleepers in, in fantasy football. We've seen Jordan Love can run, and I think that's a great one. Carly's smart. Yeah, I'm telling Man. you, bro. Man, I, I dude, I grew up in a house with, with three sisters and a mama. Those women are smart. I'm just telling You're you. Raising a house of all women. Oh, dude, yeah. It was just me and my dad. I was the youngest, dude. They beat the hell out of me. You kidding oh, me? Yeah. Dude, girls are mean. Girls are mean. <laughs> they are, dude. They are. Um, elevated shine, three sacks a game. It's possible. And then uh, we got another one here. Hot take: Musgrave over 750 receiving yards as a rookie, which almost never happens. Um, That's exactly what goes right with what you were saying, man. For sure. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> My hot take, Eric Sutherland, praying for the best, preparing for the worst. <laughs> Elevated shine, hot take, Jordan Love and MVP chats by midseason. He won't win, but he will be mentioned. Hey, that, that is a bit of a hot take. Fields but got I think it's vote last year. Fields got yeah, one vote. Yeah, dude. Come on. He we can make this happen. <laughs> for sure. Let's see here. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. All right. Uh, our shower says hot take. Dylan with more yards rushing than Jonesy. Okay. All right. And then Carly Ray says, make the show 90 minutes. No one minds. We may have to do it, Carly. We may have to do it. We talked a little bit about it, but um, Tim, hot take, man. Tim's the most conservative person I know with his opinions, man. He seems very even keel. I want him to blow this out of the water. I need to know what is your hot take, Tim? You got, you, you can say as many as you want, but what's the one, if you could only choose one, what's the top one? Well, Jacob kind of stole my thunder. And so did our showers a little bit, but but not really. My mine's mine's simple. Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon both rushed for over a thousand yards this year. Ooh, I like it. Which which never happens, right? So let's uh let's be positive and let's hey, let's look at it. We got banged up receivers right now going into week one. We're gonna run the ball. So that's my hot take, guys. 
thousand yard yeah. season for for thunder and lightning in the backfield. A little shake and bake. A little shake and bake. <laughs> shake and bake. Where were you taking this? <laughs> I love it. Absolutely love it. Let's see here. All right, we got us a hot take from Mike Sandoval. Hot take. Love will be an MVP candidate when the when they head to the bye week undefeated. Dang, well, y'all see, you're gonna get my hopes up, guys. Y'all gotta stop this. You have got to stop this. Let's see here. What else we got? Carly, we can't do it. She said, tell them about quote mad puppy. We can't do it. We can't do it. Uh, it's it's for another show, another day, another day. We were chatting offline earlier today, and uh, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> it'll get out sometime. Um, let's see here. Uh what is this? Michael, mom, Clayton didn't put the toilet seat down again. <laughs> Hey, anybody that comes to my house, any of the guys, and we have a lot of people over, I, I have to give if I go in that bathroom and there is one drop in the bathroom, bro, we're having us a meeting right now because I'm expecting Betty Irene Bailey to cut the corner and cuff me in the back of the head for somebody peeing on Tulsi. I'm just being honest with you. So, yeah, that didn't happen, my friend. That did not happen. Here's my hot take. You ready? Matt LaFleur finally wins coach of the year. Ooh. You know, one of the things that's kept him from winning coach of the year is because he's had an MVP quarterback. And that's why he couldn't sniff coach of the year. If they come out this year and they somehow make the playoffs after they've replaced an MVP quarterback and they have the youngest team in the entire national football league. So the hot take aspect comes to what if they win 10 games? Guys, what if they win 11 games? What if somehow they win 12 games? If he doesn't win coach of the year, we're marching on Park Avenue. I'm just going to tell you right now. We're going to NFL headquarters and speaking uh, speak our piece for sure. Let's see here. Uh, hot take. Tom Spaulding. I drafted Musgrave as my tight end one in fantasy and love as QB2. That's a hot take? It's not okay. a bad. That's not bad, man. Hey, yeah, I like one above it, though, because that's a real hot take. Because it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right. I'm going to wrap this puppy up. Tim, do you got anything else for us? But I think we covered everything we were going to talk about. We talked about the Nick Bosa contract. We talked about the injury report. We got our hot takes in. We took some calls. What do you got, Tim? Parting thoughts, my friend. Thanks, as always, for uh, having me on with you guys, man. I'm happy to be a part of this. Just appreciate talking ball with you. That, that's all I got, man. Great show, guys. Cool. Appreciate you, buddy, always, man. It, I'm telling you, it's a uh, – it's a, it's a joy to hear your voice, man. I mean that. You're never in a bad mood. You're always up, never down, and uh, it's you always come with uh, with good takes, man. Jacob, you got anything, buddy? No, um, but this is the last night, basically, that you can get a full-on draft in. So if you guys are listening to this and you're like, I need to draft a fantasy football league, either go to DraftKings, do a best ball, go to Drafters, go to Underdog, go to one of those places, because tomorrow, guys, tomorrow, less than 24 hours away from right now, is NFL football official season kickoff. We'll be Let's watching go. as the Kansas City Chiefs are battling the Detroit Lions. We have actual football games that affect us directly. This is divisional playoff, or not divisional playoff, but divisional games going on right now that will affect, you know, the Lions can start 0-1. I'm just saying, let's go, man. Oh, it's really exciting. And here's the thing, too, man. They're, they're probably going to be without Travis Kelsey. Sorry, Carly Ray. I apologize. And they're probably – well, they're, they're, they're most likely going to be without Chris Jones as well, right? So yeah. – and some people go, oh, the Lions should win. If the Lions lose and they're missing – and the Chiefs are missing two of their best players outside of Mahomes, their two best players hands down on offense and defense outside of Mahomes – then I think we can start to start the uh, the uh, the whole chant that we had with the Vikings last year that the Lions might be frauds. Now, right. if the Lions go in there and they beat Mahomes, even without those two guys, it's okay. We gotta you gotta show them a little bit of respect, right? Because you're going into KC. That's the defending Super Bowl champions, right? So, um, I'll I'll end it with this one right here. All right, and it's our boy Elevated Shine, Mister Prison Mike himself. He said, "Hot take: I might get banned from X Sunday night after the Packers win Sunday." And I start pulling receipts. <laughs> hey, well, speaking of hey, that, got a lot of bookmark tweets. I'm just saying, boys, they, I've got them piled up. Go ahead, Jake. No, I was just going to say, ban Afterlife real quick. We got a couple of Bears fans. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. Give them the old one, two, pow, Let's right? Here. Yeah, I don't like how he worded it, but, you know, he basically said, man, the Packers are going to get 
beat so bad on Sunday <laughs> that Jordan Love guy sucks. Really? Is that what? Are you you sure about that? You sure about that? Yeah, you're right, Jacob. They're gonna get in here and troll a little bit. We oh, got okay. with this one. Yeah, let's Pretty do sure. it. Roadhouse. Yeah, <laughs> here. See you, buddy. Nice. Appreciate the click. Appreciate the view. You're gone. All right, we're out of here, guys. We appreciate everybody hanging out with us. Uh, thank you for making us a part of your day. Um, Romero says Green Bay 24, Chicago 14. Put it down. Put it down on the ticker. Like down there on the ticker. Um, but, yeah, thank you guys for your time. For everybody listening on the pod, thank you so much for making us a part of your day. As always, let's go out and be the change we want to see in the world. And go Pack Go. The power sweep. Actually, it's the... It's a lead play in our in our offense. Double tackle, take the defensive end if he's over, if he's not, you drive down the first man who is inside. Pull back and get him. Take the first man outside the offense. Exactly. No one shows. Go right by them and feel this back. If the YN has the linebacker taken out, he cuts inside. If the YN has the linebacker in, he comes all the way around. Look at this play. We'll be trying to get a seal here and a seal here and try to run this play in the alley.